Hello and welcome back. In this video we'll be discussing the difference between enantiomers and diastereomers. So when we have isomers, we have different kinds of isomers possible. We can have constitutional isomers which have differing connectivities, okay? Or we can have stereoisomers which have the same connectivity but different arrangements in space, okay? So if they're superimposable, then they would be the same um, molecule. So that obviously they wouldn't be stereoisomers. But if they're in, if they are enantiomers, we've learned that they have to be non-superimposable mirror images. But there's a situation where we can have uh, stereoisomers that are not superimposable but are also not mirror images. So enantiomers are special stereoisomers that are non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Okay, Enantiomers are stereoisomers that are mirror images of each other. Diastereomers are stereoisomers, but they are not mirror images of each other. So they have the same connectivity, different arrangements in space, but they're not stereoisomers. Here are some examples. So a diastereomer can be uh, a, related to a double bond. So here we have cis-2-butene and trans-2-butene. These guys are not mirror images of each other. They're stereoisomers, so they are a type of diastereomer. Okay, so remember that enantiomers have identical physical properties. Diastereomers have different physical properties. So you can usually separate them by something like boiling point. They'll be, or even maybe you can separate them by solubility. Sometimes the um, stereochemistry of a molecule can even affect its solubility to the point that it will become more soluble or less soluble in a solvent. So having different physical properties allows us to separate uh, diastereomers, but not enantiomers. Enantiomers can't be separated by simple techniques. So let's consider where we might see a diastereomer on an sp3 hybridized uh, stereocenter. <clears throat> so let's consider cyclohexane, a cyclohexane derivative here. It's got three substituents. We have this OH, this methyl, and this chlorine. Okay, so we could have potentially for that molecule <coughs> eight different configurations for this molecule okay we can have all of the substituents coming out okay or all of the substituents going back remember if we swap all of the wedges and dashes we get the enantiomer so these guys from this these two are not the same they are enantiomers. You could slide the left one over on top of the right one. They'd be mirror images of each other, but you can't flip them over and put them back on top of each other. They're not superimposable. They're mirror images, so they are enantiomers to each other. Similar in the next in the next box, we have OH coming out, methyl go methyl coming out, and chlorine going back. So if we swap all of our wedges and dashes, we have OH going back methyl going back, chlorine coming out. The relationship between these two is that they are enantiomers. So again, another set here at the bottom left. We have OH coming out, methyl going back, chlorine coming out. If we swap all of our wedges and dashes, we get OH back, methyl out, and chlorine back. Now on the box on the lower right, we have OH coming out, methyl going back, chlorine going back. If we swap all of the wedges and dashes, we have OH going back, methyl out, chlorine back. So these two are enantiomers to each other. So in all of the boxes, we have enanti an enantiomeric relationship between those two molecules because we swap the wedges and dashes. We swap the configuration at every chiral center. But what's the relationship between, say, this molecule and this one, or this one 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 and this one, and so forth. We've swapped some of the, in each of those, we've swapped some of the wedges and dashes, but not all of them. OK, 
okay? So that means that they are not mirror images of each other. They are what's called diastereomers. They are diastereomers to each other. So the enantiomers are in the boxes. The diastereomers are the relationship between all of the others to, its, to that molecule, okay? So for three stereocenters, you get eight possible stereoisomers all drawn above, okay? And, let, and we looked at the relationship between all of them, okay? So these stereoisomers are comprised of four pairs of enantiomers. So we can think of this as a family where there's four pairs of twins for a total of eight, eight kids. Each kid has seven siblings where one of them is their identical twin or enantiomer and the other six are diastereomers, okay? And that's the relationship we have if we have three chiral centers in a molecule having different substituents. All right, so let's look at this chart and see if we can figure out whether each of these are enantiomers or diastereomers. So what about the molecule on the left for A, left to right? We've swapped the top um, wedge to a dash. We've swapped the next dash to a wedge. So we swapped all of the wedges and dashes. So they are enantiomers, okay? For B, we swapped the top one but we did not swap the bottom one. So if we don't swap all of the wedges and dashes, they are diastereomers, okay? For the next one, we've swapped, oh, that was a little bit tougher, isn't it? Hmm, what would happen? So we've got to do some rotating here, and this is where a molecule kit is going to come in handy. Okay, if you make a model of this, you can figure out. Let's rotate about that bond and draw the chlorine either on a wedge or a dash. Okay, so we've got a methyl on a wedge, we've got a hydrogen on a dash, and a chlorine up in the plane of the board. So let's rotate this where the chlorine is down here where the methyl group is. Okay, so can we do that? So let's rotate the Tell you what, let's do it a little bit different. Let's rotate the chlorine back where the hydrogen is. Let's do that. So now we've got our chlorine back here where the hydrogen was. What did that do to the methyl group? It brought it up in the plane of the board, okay, just like the one on the left. What did that do to the hydrogen? It brought it. Now the hydrogen is coming out, okay? So this, in fact, is the enantiomer. So sometimes we have to do some manipulation to see if we have enantiomers or the same molecule. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, it's not the enantiomer. I got that wrong. The chlorine is swapped, right? But the OH is still on a wedge. So this is not the enantiomer. Hmm, not writing here. This is not the enantiomer. These are diastereomers. To each other, okay? Those are diastereomers. So can we make some analogy of how the stereoisomeric relationship is related to the number of chiral centers that we have, okay? The maximum number of chiral uh, center, or stereoisomers, I'm sorry, that you can have for a chiral center is 2 to the n, where n is the number of chiral centers. Okay, so if you have one chiral center, you can have two stereoisomers, which are going to be a pair of enantiomers. If you have two chiral centers, that'd be two to the two, which is equal to four possible stereoisomers. Okay, if you have three chiral centers, that's going to give you eight possible stereoisomers like we saw previously and so forth. So the maximum number you can have is 2 to the n. Now if, if some of those substituents on those chiral centers are the same, you may not have that maximum, okay? So for cholesterol, we have eight possible 
we have eight, I'm sorry, chiral centers, two to the eight is equal to 256 possible stereoisomers because there are eight chiral centers. Now that doesn't actually happen in the biological system. Uh, in your body, you only produce one enantiomer of cholesterol exclusively. But there are eight chiral centers here giving you 256 possible stereoisomers for cholesterol. Uh, as we move on in this chapter, we'll discuss uh, stereoisomers even further.